Rotate. B2. This is the cockpit of an American Airlines Astrojet on takeoff. This is a special flight to acquaint you with one of the most important aerial navigation developments to come along in recent years, BME. Two of American's veteran pilots and flying specialists will be telling you about this navigation development. On the left, you have Captain Sam Saint, American's Director of Air Traffic Control Procedures. And on the right, Captain Jim Little, an Astrojet flight instructor. Now here is Captain Saint. Well, welcome aboard, ladies and gentlemen. We're happy to have you visit us here in the cockpit today. Uh, we're now flying at 22,000 feet. To most of you, this will be your first look at a jet cockpit in flight. Uh, you may find all these switches and dials and uh, controls a bit confusing. So let me try to straighten out some of this confusion before we get around to a detailed look at the one new instrument we want especially to show you. Overhead, we have banks of circuit breakers. We have approximately 500 circuit breakers in the electrical system on the Astrojet. Here we have switches that control cockpit lighting, landing lights, and navigation lights. And with these, we start the engine. Down here, we have engine instruments in the center. These tell us exactly what each engine is doing. Incidentally, they're all purring like kittens, about 60,000 horsepower worth of kittens. Now, here in front of me are the flight instruments. These same instruments are duplicated in front of Captain Little. Now, for a minute or two, while Jim flies the airplane and ground radar keeps a clear track in front of us, I would like to draw your attention to a new flight instrument that is going to lead to better air traffic control. It's the new distance measuring equipment known as DME. American Airlines was first with DME. Uh, we've been installing it in each jet as it came from the factory. American is using equipment furnished by the ITC Federal Laboratory. Uh, the way it looks now, all commercial jets, at least in this country, uh, will be equipped with DME by late next year. Uh, one of the best things about the DME is that it tells us simply and continuously exactly how far we are from the ground station we have tuned. Perhaps we can best illustrate how the DME has simplified our job by taking you through a little navigation problem. So let's start by asking the most basic question a pilot can ask. Jim, where are we? Okay, Sam, we're off the south shore of Long Island. We're on Victor Airway 16 between the Wolf intersection and the Riverhead and Long Island Bortac. Uh, perhaps we should tell the folks first, uh, Jim, what a Bortac is, and then explain uh, how we know we're on the Victor 16 airway. Very well. This much is easy. A vortex is a ground radio navigational aid which transmits a signal in all directions. It just sits there and tells us where it is when we want to know. First, we tune Riverhead Vortex on one of our Vortex receivers. Then referring to our course deviation indicator, we crank into the little window on the face of the instrument, the bearing of Victor Airway 16. When we have done this, we have on this instrument a pictorial display of where we are in relation to our desired course. As indicated here, we are on course and heading to the Riverhead Vortex. Okay, now we know we're on Victor 16 between the Wolf intersection and the Riverhead Vortex. Next question. The chart tells us it's 52 miles from Wolf to Riverhead. I want to know exactly where we are along that track. We want to be ready to turn east on Victor 30, and that's 16 miles this side of Riverhead. Jim, how about giving me the answer the old way first? Well, now we're getting a little more complicated. To find our position along Victor 16, we need to do some triangulation using two radio beams which will fix our position along our present course. Then, by referring to our chart, I can tell you exactly how far we are from the turn point onto Victor 30. But of course, at cruising speed, we're moving a mile every six seconds. 
And by the time you figure it out, we're no longer at that point. So it gets to be real important to have a way of knowing where we are at a single glance, without all this juggling of numbers and charts. That's where the new distance measuring equipment comes in. Right, Jim. Now let's tell the folks how we know where we are with the DME. Well, all we have to do is check our DME. Our DME radio is automatically tuned to the Riverhead station when we tune the Vortex receiver. The indicator tells us continuously exactly how far we are from Riverhead. Any one of our visitors could look at the DME, tap us on the shoulder, and tell us when it is time to turn into Victor 30. And what's more important, we in the airplane can tell air traffic controllers on the ground exactly when we'll reach Victor 30 with split-second precision. That's the most important information a controller can have. And with DME, we can have it continuously. Now, while I've been talking, we've come up on the intersection 16 miles from the Riverhead radio station. And Jim is turning the plane to the right onto Victor 30. Now, that's efficiency. That's what's going to pay off for you as a passenger, for me as a pilot, and for air traffic controllers on the ground. The ability to use airspace to better advantage is one of the basic ways of speeding up traffic. And the DME is a fine and simple way to do it. Sam, you might look at it this way. American Airlines, by itself, performs about 1,500 takeoffs and landings every day. If the DME saves a minute on every flight, that's 1,500 minutes or 25 hours saved every day. And that's just with Americans. When all of the airlines get DME, the hours saved will mount up pretty fast. To us in the cockpit, the prospect is exciting. The air traffic controllers feel the same way. And we hope you, the passengers, will come along with us. I hope you enjoyed the ride today. And all of us hope that this brief demonstration has acquainted you at least slightly with DME. Uh, you'll be seeing and reading more about the DME in months to come. Meanwhile, thanks for coming along. Jim, let's head back for Idlewild. Thanks, Sam.